Tell on your sides, kid talk. Think about issues. Talk it out. Learn from others. Share your thoughts. Express your feelings. It's about what's on your mind. Tell on your sides, kid talk. Hello and welcome to Kid Talk. I'm Katie Collette. School is back in session and kids are busy in the classroom, but what happens at the end of the day? Meet our special guests here to talk about mentoring youth, after school programs, and more with these students who are joining us all the way from Broadwater Academy on the eastern shore of Virginia. And we begin with our first guest expert, Nikisha Harris from Girl Power United. And you can see her girls all the way lining up here ready to answer some very important questions. So Let's get started. When the school bell rings, that doesn't necessarily mean the day is over. We all know that. There are many other activities for kids to take part in. What do you do after school? That's the very first question we're going to talk about. So what do you do after school? Go ahead and raise your hand, whoever has a... Christian, what do you do? I run cross country, and later in the spring, I do crew. OK, so very good. Brooke, what do you do after school? I do my homework. <laughs> Teachers are For very happy time. with that answer. For a long time, a you long said? Time. I'm going to scoot through here. And what do you do after school, Tia? I play basketball. Play basketball. Yes. Anyone else have anything they like to do after school? Go over this way. Excuse me. What do you do after school? I normally go to football practice and come home, play football again. Again. Basketball. <laughs> so we have a football fan here. So there's a lot of stuff to do after school. There's sports. There is homework. Uh, what kind of activities? Does anyone do any other activity other than sports or homework? Does anyone, anyone work or babysit? What do you do? I cut grass. You cut grass? Yeah. <laughs> a <right>. lot. <laughs> <laughs> so we have some very, very hard workers here. Go ahead. What, do you, what are other activities? Um, sometimes uh, my friend Rachel Fox and I go to Bridge to Literacy, which is something that we do to help Mexicans learn English, and so mm -hmm. that's kind of fun. Oh, that's great. So you're teaching folks yes. by learning yes, things that you've learned in school as well. That's wonderful. So here's the next question. Does anyone here have uh, a mentor? Does anyone here have mentors? You do? Brooke, you have a mentor? Yes. What are some things that you do with your mentor? Well, we go on trips and we pack bags for military people to get sent off and we go to all these seminars and learn about HIV and AIDS and stuff. Why do you think it's so important for you to do that with your mentor? And how does that make you feel to do that? I think it's really good because it's something we can learn about and know for future reference if somebody asks us about it or if we have somebody in our family with that own personal problem, mm -hmm. we can help them with it. Great. And Tia, what do you, uh, we, what do, you do um, with your mentor? Well, we visit... Um, like Santera um, nursing homes, and we pass out bags during the seasons, like Christmas and stuff, gifts and stuff to the uh, senior citizens and everything. We help them out, and we just go to the talk to them, give them company and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So wonderful. Who here thinks it is important to have a mentor for kids after school to have a mentor? Maybe someone who, when they go home, there's nobody there. Do you think it's important for them to have a mentor? Yes. You do. Now, uh, let's bring in our expert here, Nikisha Harris with Girl Power. Uh, what do you want the kids here to know and folks who are watching? How can mentors and after-school programs help kids in their daily lives? Well, as far as mentorship, I think mentors can have a significant impact on the lives of especially um, teenage girls and other children. Our organization focuses on teenage girls, but um, mentorship can inspire and motivate children um, regardless of their gender, and it can help them focus on education and what career goals they need to make in life as well. Which, of course, is very important, especially uh, for students here. Even those you know, watching the show, they need to know what they want to try to become and test different things out. Yes. Talk to me about Girl Power. Well, Girl Power United, as I stated, is an organization that's focused on empowering and educating teen girls between the ages of 12 and 19. Um, we have various programs, and one of our programs, that, as we're talking about today, is a mentorship program. We also have empowerment workshops, a scholarship um, program, a teen leadership program, and a an HIV and teen health awareness program. All right, is anyone here a mentor? Does anyone mentor anybody here? 
<laughs> Does anyone have uh, any siblings? Let me ask you that. How many of you have brothers or sisters? Go ahead and raise your hands. Um, how many of you have younger brothers and sisters? Do you think, Matthew, that in any way you might be a mentor to your brothers and sisters and don't even realize it? Yes. Why do you think you could be a mentor to them? Uh, because I push them to do better, and that's about it. That, yes. That's really all you need. If you're a mentor, you want to push someone to do better. Does it make you feel good to yes, be able to help them? Yes, it makes me feel way? great. Okay, who else has uh, younger brothers or sisters? Let's see here. Frank, do you mentor them? Yes. In what way? Uh, to help them do better in sports, like Matt just uh, said, and to do better in school as well. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to uh, after-school programs, raise your hand if you enjoy them. Do you have fun participating in the after-school programs? That's pretty much everyone here. Although one person back there who was working said, eh, I'm not so sure. <laughs> <laughs> but the after-school programs uh, can certainly be very important, and we said for, for homework, uh, testing, and they can also develop uh, your athleticism. Uh, where are the athletes here? Who, who plays sports after school again? All right, let's, we'll start over here. We haven't heard from you yet, Rachel. What do you think, you know, we've talked about childhood obesity and folks needing to get into shape, and after school, you're choosing to spend your time with sports. How can that help people with their everyday lives? Um, well, I just think getting into shape, I mean, does it help you stay fit and healthy, alert? What are the benefits of, of being in athletics after school? Um, you get to spend time more with your friends. Um, you get, your coaches will be like your role models, which is really nice. Um, like getting in shape. Mm -hmm. Nikisha, let me ask you this. Uh, folks who want to be mentors and they say, you know, I don't, I think I can do something really good for kids, but I don't have a lot of money. I don't have a lot of money to spend, but I have a lot that I can give. What do you want to say to people who feel that way? I don't think it takes money to be a mentor. Anyone can be a mentor if you're a coach, like the young lady stated, or you know, a parent, a teacher. Anyone can give their time to the youth in your community. And it's just a matter of doing various things. I mean, you can go to the park, you can go to the library. So there's a lot of things that you can do with students that doesn't require any money at all. And spending time with folks really can be priceless with yes. the impact you can have. Thank yes. you so much. Time for a quick break. We will continue our discussion, though, when we come back. Welcome back to Kid Talk. Today we're talking about mentors and after-school programs with these students who are joining us from... Academy. on the eastern shore of Virginia. You're doing that so well with such power. Joining us also is our guest expert, Angela Bernard from Southampton Roads YMCA. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. We're talking about types of mentors in our last segment and why it might be a good idea to have one. Of course, after school programs are pretty important too. Uh, we've touched on it a bit, but let's talk about it just a little bit more. What is the importance of an after-school program. How can that benefit somebody? We'll go right back here. Well, you're a superstar today. You got all the answers. I think it can help you like, learn responsibility and keep you out of trouble. Mm -hmm. That way, you, uh, yeah, pretty much. That's good, yeah, help keeping you. you out of trouble. Uh, anyone else? What do you think is the benefit of an after-school program? How can that help you? I think it teaches you how to work well with other people mm -hmm. and just good sportsmanship and that can help you a lot in life. Why do you think that's a good thing to learn? I mean it can help with a lot of jobs and you're just gonna use that a lot and right. it teaches you to be a better person. Who else? Who else can explain why they think after-school programs are good? Christian? Um, it also helps you deal with stress especially with school if you have a lot of homework or you have a lot of work. I know that in cross-country it's awesome just to be able to go out and just be able to run and not have anything else matter. That's right. You can think of getting homework done and, and focus. Do, do you feel like it kind of makes you zero in on things that you really need to focus on? Because, I mean, I mean, with high school students, how many of you feel like you're super busy? You're getting pulled in a lot of different directions, right? With classes and applying for college. Anyone else? Any ideas for after-school programs, how they benefit kids? Go ahead, Rachel. They teach you time management skills, which is a really important life skill to have. 
I would say so. Time management is a pretty big deal, isn't it? Well, why don't we talk here, what kind of programs, Angela, does the, uh, does the YMCA give for students after school? We are the largest nonprofit child care provider in Southampton Roads, um, and we do before and after school programming for almost 3,000 elementary school students on a daily basis. Now, these guys are older, mm -hmm. um, so they are into their own things in the after school, but for our younger kids, it's important um, to have a safe place to be after school if parents are working, um, but also to get some much needed homework help. Parents are really busy. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes you're just rushed, you're picking up your kids and you're making dinner and then it's time to go to bed, those kinds of things. Um, but it's also really important that kids have the experiences with a, um, an adult, a caring adult outside the home. Mm -hmm. um, these kids have talked about coaches or teachers or other things like that. It just gives kids another opportunity to touch with an adult um, that's not their parent <laughs> mm -hmm. that can really demonstrate how much they care about them. Do you have something there for all ages at the Y? We do. Um, I mean, child care is primarily elementary school age kids, um, but we do do a lot of middle school programming, particularly in the summertime. And then throughout the school year, most of our family centers have leaders clubs, and those are for older middle school and high school students um, who really want to learn about some leadership skills, um, develop some mentoring skills, um, and then just give back to the community. Has anyone in here ever been to a YMCA? Here we have a whole big group. Let's, let's go back here. Talk to me about your experience there. Do you do things there after school, or why do you think it's important to go? Um, it makes you like get out of the house and stuff like that. It like, gives you extra stuff to do. I, mean, I go there and play basketball sometimes with my, my friends and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and it gives me like, it, it makes you a better person. Just. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? <laughs> well, that's what just, we said, you know, it gives, it gives folks something And it to gives you like a, it gives you character. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. Everyone's got a little case of the giggles today, but that's, a, yeah, that's, that's a good response. Anyone else who has, has been to the Y and been able to, to use some of the programs there, why you think it is important to get out and maybe break out of your shell from school and go to a different organization? Anyone else have any answer to that, why they think that that might be important to do? <laughs> Go over this way, excuse me. I think it's important you get to know, like get to know new people and make more friends. And I guess it helps you with your social life so you don't feel like a, you know. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can really meet some different yeah. folks other than your classmates, which can be very important in life. Yeah. All right. When it comes to enrolling in the YMCA programs, how easy is that for people to do? What do they have to do to get that done? Um, it's really very easy. A lot of our enrollment can be done online. Uh, mm -hmm. through our website, um, www.ymcashr.org. Um, our after-school programs are a little bit more labor-intensive um, to do. It just you know, takes a couple extra steps. Um, but all of our programs and services are searchable online, um, as well as our membership. Those of you who are involved in after-school programs and want to encourage other folks to get involved, can you share any of your experiences, any uh, a good moment, a good story to uh, maybe try to inspire someone else who's trying to figure it out, trying to figure out, do I want to be a part of something after school? Because, you know, it can be a little overwhelming. You're thinking of your homework and your sports and everything that you're doing, and, you know, sometimes they need a release. So does anyone have uh, a story they'd like to share about an after-school program they're in and, you know, how it has impacted their lives in a positive way? I know someone has something. Here we go. Christian? I mean, I know during the past couple of winters I don't do a sport, and if I don't have something to do after school and I'm just doing homework all the time, I will go crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so, you know, it's, I think everybody would say that it's very important to have an after school program. Mm -hmm. Amanda, are you involved in, in anything after school? Um, cheerleading. Mm -hmm. Cheerleading? Mm -hmm. So, why would you encourage folks to maybe try to get involved in that? Um, it's positive and it's something to do after school. How does it make you feel to, to get out there in front of those folks and you're cheering and cheerleaders, you know, always show that they're smiling and they're happy, you know? <laughs> does it make you feel good? What do you Yeah, it makes me feel good, it makes me happy. And do you think it's important for folks your age to feel that yes, way? Yes, yes. How about you, Hunter? Any, anything that you do after that? Uh, well, like I said before, I'm either working or I'm doing crew or Mm -hmm. Something like that. When you do crew, what do you, 
how, do you enjoy that? Is that something that's kind of a release for you, a way to have a good time? It's nice most of the time. Mm -hmm. You know, if the coach is in a good mood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not uncommon to hear. It kind of yeah. depends on how, how hard the coach is pushing you that day, huh? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right, well, it is time for another break. But first, remember, you can catch Kid Talk online anytime. Just log on to wavy.com and click the on-air tab to find us. You can also watch full episodes, including this one right here. So be sure to check it out. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Kid Talk. We're talking about the importance of mentors and after school programs, and it's been a really good discussion so far. These students are joining us from Broadwater Academy. And they are from the eastern shore of Virginia. Our guest expert, Margaret Thorne, with the Portsmouth Parks and Recreation Department. Margaret, thank you for stepping in today. We have a, a lot of good questions for you. So, thanks to everyone for joining us. Uh, we all know that mentors and after school programs are certainly important. So now let's talk about how you can fit them into your daily routine, which we know can be a little tricky because your daily routines are already pretty darn packed. So how do you as students try and make time? Rachel, earlier you spoke about the importance of time management. So how do you all manage your time? Do you have to try to get certain things done before you go uh, to do another event? Let's start here with Benjamin, how, how do you try to manage your time? What do you do so you can get to do other activities uh, you enjoy? Well, for school work, I usually try to take advantage of my study halls and get a lot of my homework done then, or if we ever have free time in any of our classes, to try to get work done then so I have more time, so I can spend more time with my after school activities. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? How do you try? And, um, and I promised I was going to come right over to you at some point. <laughs> so how do you try to manage time to get to do things you like? Um, I prioritize what classes I have each day because we switch off four and four, and I try to get tomorrow's homework done and leave the rest for later. That's very smart. A lot of it's really taking advantage of the time that you have during school with study halls. Uh, how about you, Holly? What do you do to try and manage time? I try and plan out like what I'm doing after practice or before practice so that I can get it all done in a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. Now, Margaret, I'll let, you, I'll let you chat with Portsmouth Park and Recreation. Uh, how can that play into kids with uh, after school, school programs and them managing their tr time to try and get to somewhere? Well, we, we, we also offer before and after school programs as well, and we utilize the schools. We utilize 15 schools. And basically what we're trying to do with the younger kids is to teach them how to have, be structured in terms of doing homework, but being able to have a little bit of fun as well. We uh, utilize a lot of the professionals in the, the school system so that we can make sure that the child's doing their homework, and we focus a lot on the SOL testing and tutoring. Uh, in terms of the recreation aspect, we hire recreation staff as well, and they come in and they bring the somewhat fun part of it where they get activities, which could be crafts, could be dancing, and we, we're now uh, focusing a lot on... Uh, healthy initiatives in terms of line dancing and the, the children's Zumba and different things like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can incorporate a lot of those things, but we also bring in some uh, speakers that can give them some kind of leadership skills as well. Does anyone here think that a mentor and an after-school program can be wrapped all into one? Can it all be done at the same time? And, and how do you think that? Ben, I'll come over to you here. How do you think it's possible to have them all wrapped into one? Well, I look at uh, sports. A lot of my coaches I consider mentors, and going to practice, I would consider you know having sports, which is an after-school program for us, and coaches mm -hmm. be wrapped together. Some folks who may not be involved in sports as much, can you explain to them how a coach is mentor-like at the same time while this is you know an after-school program you're involved in? Well, not only do they help you with you know uh, sports, but also I feel like they help you in life. Uh, just teach you responsibility, you know, dedication and hard work, which helps er, all of those help in life. So, mm -hmm. very good. Anyone else? Do you think that um, mentors and after-school programs can be tied all into one, and and how so? If you think that, Rachel, what do you think? Um, I agree with Ben with the coaches and everything. But um, I do this thing called Bridge to Literacy with Jamie over there, mm -hmm. and um, we teach Hispanic how Hispanic people how to read, and um, I feel like we're a mentor to them, and you know we're also helping them later in life with reading and everything. That's a really great idea, and that's something that's really unique. It's it's just proof that there really is uh, something out there for everyone if they just want to try and get involved in some way. Don't you agree? You think so? 
Margaret, you had mentioned you're trying line dancing and, and children's Zumba and a lot of things to try and get folks involved. Why do you think it's so important for uh, some of these students, anyone in Portsmouth, to come out and, and meet with Portsmouth Park and Recreation to figure well, this out? Well, and what we're trying to do is, is trying to get children up and moving, and we're trying to give them something structured to do after school. Uh, we also offer uh, some open programs in our recreation centers to get those children that are not school age, well, they're not elementary school age which are our teens and our older children. And there are different groups, so we have to try to find those things that they enjoy. So it's, we bring in a lot of speakers and different things like that, but we're trying to get them to just get up and move and not to be at home, like I think one of the young kids said, um, so that they don't get into trouble, that they can mm -hmm. actually understand the importance of participating with other children, but being preparing themselves for, for life and, you know, as they get older. Right. Schoolwork, we've talked about that. Uh, after school, are, are there different ways for after, schools, after school programs you can get involved with those? Are there any that help you with your schoolwork that you have heard of that you can do after school? Has anyone heard of any after school programs that they can do? Christian? I mean, I'd just like to point out that if you do a sport or something like that, that will help you with your schoolwork because if you're breathing, you're working out, more oxygen to your brain, mm -hmm. oxygen in your brain, smarter, you can do better on your schoolwork. I just want to point that out. I think we have a health pro. <laughs> Not bad. Anyone else? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is common knowledge. That's true. That's a very good point. What about when kids, though, have, you know, you have a test that you need to study for. There's something difficult coming up. Are there after school programs that you can get involved in to help you with your studies? Have you ever had a teacher have anything after school? Has anyone heard of anything uh, like that? I see you nodding your head there, Jamie. Um, well, a bunch of our teachers actually on the first day of school always talk to us and tell us that anytime we need them, just come talk to them and they'll help us with whatever. So it's always really encouraging to have that. Yeah, it certainly helps when, because homework can be tough sometimes. I know for me, math was not my strong point, but thank goodness I had someone that could help me along. So it is certainly very important to do that. We will be right back after this next break with just a little bit more to chat about when it uh, comes to mentors and after school programs. We'll be right back. We are coming to the end of another Kid Talk, and we want to thank these students from... Broadwater Academy! And we also want to thank our guest experts, Angela Bernard from Southampton Roads YMCA, Margaret Thorne with Portsmouth Park and Recreation, who's on the set right now, and uh, Nikisha Harris from Girl Power United. Today we've been talking about mentors and after-school programs, and we just want to kind of wrap things up and, and share with folks just any final thoughts about the importance of after-school programs and mentors. So we have some, some new folks in the back row here. We want to get you involved. Are there any after-school programs or uh, mentorship programs that you're involved in in any way that you'd like to share with folks to see if maybe they're interested and get involved? Jesse? Oh, well, um, most days after school we have cheer practice and I guess you could say our coach, um, Christy Kellum, is kind of a mentor to all of us. And in what way would she be a mentor? Well, I don't know. I guess just with the way she gives us advice and like how we live our lives and positive attitudes and all. Mm -hmm. Laura, why do you think it's important for people to have mentors or even be a mentor themselves? Um, I just feel like everyone needs kind of a role model to like model themselves after and someone to um, just show them kind of how to be a good person. I don't mm -hmm. know. Ashley, do you think it's important for folks to have mentors? Absolutely. I think they need someone to really look up to and try to like be like and strive to, for like new goals. Mm -hmm. Really help give them a push to maybe yes. make life a bit better. Uh, Katie, what do you think about after school programs? Are there any that you are involved in currently? Um, just sports. I uh, mm -hmm. play volleyball. It takes a lot of time. You have, you have practices and you have the games and mm -hmm. you also have school. So how do you try and balance all of your time? Um, it's hard, um, but I have a lot of coaches. The coaches are good and mentors and help us and do the best, help us be the best we can. Mm -hmm. Margaret, one final question for you with uh, Portsmouth Parks and Recreation. If folks do want to get involved and they want to come out and, and try and help out with different things there or even have their kids participate, is it easy for them to just come out and sign up? Or? It's very easy. All they have to do is contact our office at 393-8481 and just um, identify what programs they're interested in and we can send them to the right person in the right place. 
So it's always pretty simple. And uh, everyone who thinks it is important to get involved in after-school programs or mentors, let's, let's raise our hands. Do you think it is important? Yes, see right there, that is the answer that you need. Of course, it is very important. And we thank you all so much for taking your time before school <laughs> to fit us in here for Kid Talk. And I know you're going to all be very busy after. So, of course, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Thank you for the students for joining us from where? Broadwater Academy. They are pros. Thanks, everybody. We will see you next time for another Kid Talk episode. <laughs>